الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين ما بعد Surely all praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for he is the creator, sustainer and controller of the universe and all within. And we invoke his peace and blessings upon his noble messenger, his family, his companions and all those who follow them in righteousness until the end of time. And may Allah be exalted cause us all to be among them. Respected elders, dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I know it has been quite some months since uh, we had our last session on the seerah but it's good to be back mashallah and we will continue and we will start with some of the events that unfolded in the fifth year of the hijrah the last thing we talked about in terms of major events was the Battle of Uhud, which happened in the third year of the Hijrah. And within two years, the second and the third, there were two battles, Badr and then Uhud, that the Meccans waged against the Muslims. In the fourth year, they didn't uh, come into battle. But then in the fifth year, the Meccans decided to make a third attempt. So in the span of just four years or a little more than three years they would wage three wars against the Muslims in Medina now the battle of Al-Ahzab as it is called or Ghazwat uh, Khandaq Al-Ahzab means uh, allies or crowds and it's called the allies because Quraysh did not come alone they were able to uh, get their, their, their allies among the various Arab tribes to join them. <coughs> and it's called Ghazwatu uh, Khanda, the battle of the trench or the ditch, because, as you will uh, hear, the Muslims dug a trench in order to protect Medina. Now, this battle happened because, first of all, there is a Jewish tribe named Banu Nadir. They were expelled from Medina. So they took up residence in a place called Khaybar. Khaybar is a place that had very fertile ground, agricultural land. Um, so they took up residence there. But they did not forget the fact that they were expelled from Medina. So they were bitter over that, they were hurt. And so this, of course, coupled with their initial dislike and hatred for the Muslims. So they sent their chiefs to Mecca and they incited the people of Quraysh to wage another war against the Muslims and they promised them that they would have the full support. And then these chiefs of the, the Banu Nadir, they also visited some of the various other tribes that live around Mecca in the area and they were able to get them to join forces with Quraysh. So as you can see, Quraysh did not come alone, but they came with a number of other tribes. As a result of these efforts, you have, uh, and this is a major Arab tribe, Banu Salim, you have Banu Ghatafan, and Banu Murra, three big tribes besides Quraysh, that joined forces with Quraysh, and so together, they were able to muster close to 10,000 soldiers. And they're called Al-Ahzab, the allies, because of all these different tribes that joined forces with Quraysh. Now, the Prophet ﷺ heard about this effort, this preparation for war, from his uncle Al-Abbas. You know Al-Abbas, the Prophet's uncle, would embrace Islam years later at the conquest of Mecca. And this happened like eight, three years before the conquest of Mecca. But because of the family relations he had with the Prophet ﷺ, remember the Prophet's father and Al-Abbas are brothers, so the Prophet ﷺ is his nephew. 
And so because of the family ties and the family connection, he actually sent a message to inform the Prophet of the plans of Quraysh. So the Muslims were not caught off guard, so to speak. So when the Prophet ﷺ got this information from his uncle, he gathered the Sahaba, as was his uh, tradition and his, his custom. He would always consult with the Sahaba. We talked about this uh, at length during the Battle of Uhud, how he consulted with them and, and, and so on. <clears throat> so again, he consulted with the Sahaba as to what to do now. How shall we defend ourselves? What's the best strategy? And the companion Salman al-Farisi, right? Salman radiallahu anhu, as his name says, al-Farisi, the Persian, he's not Arab, he's Persian. And his journey actually from Persia to Medina and his journey to Islam is quite an interesting one. And uh, when he told the Prophet as Imam Bukhari mentions in his Sahih, you can read the, the details there. When he told the Prophet salam his story, the Prophet found it amazing and he told him, tell my companions, tell them the story. Anyways, Salman al-Farisi suggested that they should dig a trench in order to keep the enemy out. Now the scholars of Islam say that this was a sort of a unique suggestion because the Arabs never used the trench as a strategy of war. So when Salman suggested it, suggested this idea, it was kind of brand new to them. And the reason he suggested the Digga Trench, in those days, if you look at the geography of Medina, you would have found that on the west side and on the east side of Medina, there are mountains. So no army can come in from the west or the east. From the south, in the direction of the Qibla, there are lava rocks, plus the houses in that area are very close together. So a large group of people cannot come in at once. It, it will take a single file of people to come in. So again, it wasn't uh, really a good plan to attack from the south, because as you get your soldiers in, in single file, one by one, the Muslims, all they had to do was to wait there and just slaughter them as they came in one by one. So the only open area was from the north, the north side of Medina. So if you can protect the north side, you're safe. The east, the west, the south, these are naturally protected. So Salman who suggested that they should dig a trench in, on the north side in order to uh, protect themselves. Now, in the end, the Prophet ﷺ decided to dig the trench. This trench, Al Khandaq, was about four and a half kilometers long. Four and a half kilometers long. It was about 15 feet wide, so you couldn't just jump across, right? 15 feet wide, roughly about 10 feet deep. So again, you couldn't jump down into the trench and then climb up the other side. It wasn't that shallow. It was about 10 feet deep. And the Prophet ﷺ had about 3,000 Sahaba with him. You notice all these battles, the Muslims are outnumbered 3 to 1. In Badr, they were a little more than 300, 314, some scholars say, as opposed to 1,000. In Uhud, the enemy were, were 3,000. The Muslims left Medina with, with 1,000, but then on the way, 300 returned. So only 700 people went into battle. 700 against 3,000. And then here again in Al-Ahzab, we found that the Muslims were only 3,000, while the enemy, Quraysh, and their allies together were 10,000 strong. So they dug the trench, according to the scholars, in about six days. And this is the miracle. Because in those days, they did not have the heavy equipment we have these days. They did not have dynamite and explosive explosives to blast their way through the rock. Just with whatever handmade tools they had, and 3,000 of the Sahaba with the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in six days, they dug the trench. Four and a half kilometers long. It was not a continuous trench. You have to understand this. Because even in the north of Medina, it's not just flat and open. 
all right you have mountains and little hills in between so they dug the trail from one mountain to the next and then they came on this side of the mountain and dug to the other and like that today the trench does not exist but the area still is there in Medina um, I remember the days when now they have renovated it and they have built a big masjid in the area but before that when I went to Medina the area was called Saba Masajid, the seven mosques they had seven little mosques in the area because the, the, the Sahaba when uh, in this battle because it's a trench four and a half kilometers long they did not all concentrate in one spot they were divided into little groups and each group had to uh, watch over a section of the trench so that the enemy doesn't cross and so wherever these little groups were uh, often they had to pray their salah right there <clears throat> so in six days they were able to do this just 3,000 men with no heavy equipment no dynamite no explosives this itself is a miracle one of the miracles that happened uh, during the digging the actual digging once the Sahaba came across a big rock that was blocking their path in the trench and they told the Prophet and he came and he took his shovel or spade whatever implement they had and he struck the rock and it crumbled to pieces almost as if it blew up right into little pieces and they were able to uh, throw out these tiny pieces now the Ahzab right this crowd the Quraysh uh, and their allies they arrived around the 5th of Shawwal in that year just after the month of Ramadan 5th of Shawwal in the year uh, in the 5th year of the Hijrah and they were led by Abu Sufyan everybody knows him they, they also had Khalid ibn Walid alright he was very instrumental in what happened in Uhud if you recall the story um, but in year 6 right at the treaty of al Hudaybiyah, Khalid would embrace Islam so at the time of Al-Ahzab he was still not Muslim and then they also had Amr ibn al-As he's also a very smart man Amr ibn al-As and Ikrimah ibn Abi Jahl Abu Jahl was killed in the battle of Uhud uh, sorry battle of Badr his son Ikrimah was one of the leaders of Quraysh later on Ikrimah would actually embrace Islam as well <coughs> and Abu Sufyan was also instrumental in getting another Jewish tribe, Banu Quraida, to throw their support behind them. Remember, when the Prophet ﷺ migrated, he had a pact with all the citizens of Medina, including these Jewish tribes, because they were living in Medina. So he included them in the agreement as citizens of uh, Medina. And one of the terms of the treaty and the pact he made with them was that the well-being of Medina is the concern of all the citizens of Medina regardless of religion when it comes to religion each group is free to practice their own religion and follow their own laws according to their religion but when it comes to the well-being of Medina in terms of uh, defending it in particular against attack it was the responsibility of all the citizens religion would be put aside and they would come together as citizens of Medina to defend it. So this was actually a breach of this pact that the Prophet ﷺ had with Bani Quraida. Anyways, they still went ahead because they were looking to uh, see the Muslims defeated. Now, when Quraysh arrived, they were actually surprised because they saw this trench that now separated them from crossing over and engaging the Muslims in actual fighting. They had no choice, they had to camp on one side of the trench, on the outside. And the Muslims, of course, were on the inside, just watching them and see what's happening. Now, this battle actually mostly was a standoff. Because right? the two armies couldn't get close, the trench separated them. It was a standoff. At one point, uh, this battle, first of all, lasted about 25 days, close to a month. So Quraysh came with their allies and they just camped there because they didn't expect the trench and they spent the time there thinking and brainstorming how they can overcome this trench and so they ended up spending over 25 days now during the 25 days what some of them did was they slaughtered some camels and some horses and threw the carcasses in the trench and so they built like a bridge of 
the carcasses of these dead animals in order to cross over. But if you think about it, brothers and sisters, how many camels and horses can they kill to fill the trench in so that a huge number could cross at once? They couldn't. So even that sort of bridge made from animal carcasses that they were able to, to build, they could still only cross in single file. And the Muslims just waited on the other side and as each soldier came over one by himself, they slaughtered him. So very quickly, they abandoned that idea. And so most of the battle of uh, al khanda al it was really just a standoff. The Muslims weren't interested in fighting. They were just interested in defending themselves. In fact, if nobody attacked them, they would be very happy. They didn't want to, be, uh, to go to war. And, and Quraysh, of course, they came on the offensive, but now they had this obstacle in front of them. They couldn't figure out a way over across this trench, so they ended up camping 